After the historic success of Chandrayaan-3, India's mission to the sun, Aditya L-1 has been launched successfully. The spacecraft will be placed in a halo orbit around the Lagrange point L-1 of the Sun-Earth system, which is about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. A satellite placed in the halo orbit around the L1 point has the major advantage of continuously viewing the sun without any occultation or eclipses. This will provide a greater advantage of observing the solar activities and its effect on space weather in real time. In this video, let's take a look at the trajectory of Aditya L1, the payloads it carries and how ISRO's mission is different to NASA's Parker Solar Probe. Aditya L1 carries seven payloads to observe the photosphere, chromosphere and the outermost layer of the sun which is the corona using electromagnetic and particle and magnetic field detectors. Before diving into the specifics of Aditya L1 mission, it's important to understand what is a payload and what are Lagrange points. Payload is the scientific or technological instrument carried on board a satellite for a specific purpose. These payloads vary in their purpose, size, composition, capabilities, etc. Lagrange points are the positions in space where a small object tends to stay if put there in a two-body gravitational system. In this case, the two bodies are the Sun and Earth. Why are Lagrange points important? It's because the closer an object is to the Sun, the faster it moves. So, any spacecraft going around the Sun in an orbit smaller than Earth's will soon overtake our planet. The loophole to overcome this is the Lagrange point. At this point, Earth's gravity pulls it in the opposite direction and cancels some of the Sun's pull. With a weaker pull towards the Sun, the spacecraft needs less speed to maintain its orbit so it can slow down. If the distance is just right, about a hundredth of the distance to the Sun, the spacecraft will travel slowly enough to keep its position between the Sun and the Earth. This is L1 and is a good position from which to monitor the Sun since the constant stream of particles from the Sun, the solar wind, reaches L1 about an hour before reaching Earth. For two-body gravitational systems, there are a total of five Lagrange points, denoted as L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5. Now let's take a look at how the Aditya L1 mission will travel to L1. Aditya L1 has been launched and has been placed in Earth's orbit. Subsequently, the orbit will be made more elliptical and later the spacecraft will be launched towards the Lagrange point L1 by using onboard propulsion. As the spacecraft travels towards L1, it will exit the Earth's gravitational sphere of influence. After exit from sphere of influence, the cruise phase will start and the spacecraft will be injected into a large halo orbit around L1. The major contrast is the distance of the two missions to the Sun. As mentioned, the Aditya L1 mission will be placed at L1 which is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. On the other hand, Parker Solar Probe flies through the Sun's atmosphere as close as 6.11 million kilometers to its surface, well within the orbit of Mercury and more than 7 times closer than any spacecraft has come before. Earth's average distance to the Sun is 149.6 million kilometers. NASA's Parker Solar Probe, launched in 2018, was the first spacecraft to swoop inside the corona layer and sample particles and magnetic fields there. Although the two missions share common objectives, the payloads of these two missions vary, be it in size, composition or capabilities. Aditya L1 has seven payloads. Out of the seven payloads, four payloads using the special vantage point L1 directly view the sun and the remaining three payloads carry out in situ studies of particles and fields at L1. The suits of Aditya L1 payloads are expected to provide crucial information to understand the problem of coronal heating and coronal mass ejection 
which is an event in which a large cloud of energetic and highly magnetized plasma erupts from the sun into space causing radio and magnetic disturbances on the earth the payloads will also study flare activities and their characteristics along with the dynamics of space weather propagation of particle and fields etc there are four remote sensing payloads the first one is vlc which is the prime payload on board aditya l1 this is designed as a reflective corona graph with a multi slit spectrograph the corona graph blocks out light emitted by the sun's actual surface so that the corona can be observed the spectrograph separates the incoming light by its wavelength or frequency and records the resulting spectrum just like a prism the second remote sensing payload is suit which is a uv telescope to image the solar disk in the near ultraviolet wavelength range solar disk is nothing but the circular visible surface of the sun the third remote sensing payload is solex s which is a soft x-ray spectrometer designed to measure the solar soft x-ray flux to study solar flares solar flare is an intense high energy radiation from the sun's surface that causes magnetic disturbances on earth The fourth remote sensing payload is HEL1OS which is a hard x-ray spectrometer designed to study high energy x-rays in solar flares. The second set of payloads are in situ payloads. The Aspex payload comprises two subsystems, one low energy spectrometer to measure the proton and alpha particles of the solar wind and a high energy spectrometer to measure high energy ions of the solar wind. The second in situ payload is PAPA which is designed to understand solar winds and its composition and do mass analysis of solar wind ions. The third in situ payload is MAG which is meant to measure the low intensity magnetic field between two planets in space. The uniqueness of Aditya L1 lies in the fact that the mission will observe the dynamics of coronal mass ejection close to the solar disk thereby providing information in the acceleration regime of coronal mass ejection or CME which is not observed consistently there is also onboard intelligence to detect CMEs and solar flares this ensures optimized observation and data volume The study of solar wind is done using multi-direction observations which gives a clear picture on directional and energy anisotropy. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.